This unit on variation, classification and inheritance is split into four sections. So let's kick off with variation. A species is a group of living things that can interbreed successfully to produce fertile young. Human beings are one species, fish another, roses another and grasses another. But if we look at ourselves within our own species, we are very different from each other. Variation is the name given to these differences between members of the same species. A species is a group of living things that can interbreed, and a species has the same features. Variation is the differences within the species. The variation within our species, or any other species, is caused by both our genetic makeup and the environment. And it's these genetic and environmental factors that we're going to look at next. The variation is caused partly by the genetic material we have inherited from our parents. My eyes and nose are the same shape as my mother's, but the shape of my face is the same as my dad's. We say these characteristics are genetic. They are decided by the genes we have inherited from our parents. The genes that carry the blueprint of our inherited features can be found inside the nucleus of every cell in our bodies, and it is our genes that determine many things about us. All animals pass coded messages from parent to child. Messages instructing the growing fetus to develop blood cells, bone cells, or brain cells. And these messages are called genes. To find out what genes are and how all this information gets transferred, I went to see Dr. Fran Bulkwell. What's in these tubes, Fran? Well, what you can see here is the chemical instructions of life, strands and strands of genes that are the instructions to make a human being. If you like, it's the secret of life itself. What do these genes do? Well, the easiest way to think about genes is that they're recipes. Genes are recipes for making proteins. Now, each gene in your body is a recipe for making one protein. It could be a protein that makes your eyes the colour they are, a protein that makes this, your skin the colour it is. Um, all in all, you've got about 100,000 gene recipes in your body. Exactly. Where do we find these genes? It's very easy, in every single one of your cells. Look at my finger, for instance. There's about 10 million cells in my little finger, and every one of those cells has got an identical copy of all the genes that are necessary to make me. So, everything about you and me, eye colour, hair colour, blood group, are all decided by the genes we inherit. Well, not quite everything. Environmental causes also affect variation, the differences between us. Environmental causes of variation are due to the circumstances and conditions of our upbringing. Exercise and diet are obvious examples of different lifestyles. But how about intelligence? athleticism and personality. These are combinations of both genetic and environmental causes. Plant variations within a species are also due to their genetic makeup and the environment. But unlike animals, environmental conditions have a much greater effect on how a plant turns out. More sunlight, more soil nutrients and more water can make one plant twice as big as another. <laughs> Points to remember are variation within a species is caused by two factors. Genetic causes are due to the genes we inherit and environmental causes are due to the conditions we live in. By taking advantage of variation within a species over hundreds of generations, new varieties can be bred with desirable features. This is called selective breeding and we can see it all around us. Let's look at a species more familiar to us. There's a huge number of different breeds of dogs, 
These exist because people have selected different dogs and bred them in the hope of getting puppies which have inherited certain qualities from each parent. This is called selective breeding, when plants or animals are crossed to retain or emphasize a particular feature. It's hard to believe that this tiny chihuahua weighs about the same as a bag of sugar, shares the same ancestor as this huge Great Dane, she is about the same as a large person. That common ancestor is a wolf. Although these might look like huggable pets, only after centuries of selective breeding have these wild and ferocious animals been tamed into the dog we can live with. Now, you don't need to know a lot about this subject, but remember, selective breeding doesn't just apply to dogs. Many of our domestic livestock, fruit, vegetables and grains have been selectively bred over thousands of generations to produce the desired result. All living things can be sorted into groups, and the members of each group will have similar features. This process of sorting things into groups is called classification. This means that different species that are quite similar to each other can be put into larger groups, and we can first divide up all living things on Earth into an animal kingdom and a plant kingdom. These kingdoms can be further split up. For Key Stage 3, you need to know about the animal kingdom, how it is divided up and why. First, it can be clearly grouped into two, between animals that don't have a backbone, invertebrates, and animals that do, vertebrates. For your test, you don't need to know all the names of the invertebrate groups. If a question comes up, you'll often be given a table with their names, but it's a good idea to be familiar with some of the species. So, invertebrates can be split into five groups. Insects. Arachnids, that's spiders and scorpions. Crustaceans, for example, lobsters and woodlice. Mollusks, such as snails and mussels. And finally, annelids, worms and leeches. Vertebrates, animals with backbones, which includes us, are split into five main animal groups, according to their major characteristics. And for your test, you'll need to know these well and understand how the groups have been divided up. Why not stop the tape and see if you can write down the five groups? The five groups of vertebrates are mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. We can put all vertebrates in their different groups. We humans are mammals. These fish are fish. But what do Goldie and his friends have in common with other fish? And what makes me a mammal? What do I have in common with giraffes, mice and pet dogs? And what distinguishes us from birds? Let's look more closely and find out just what makes a mammal a mammal. Right, what I want you to do Luckily, we can put vertebrates into their different groups just by looking at them. We can identify each of the five groups by their external features. This group of students here at Marwell Zoo have been set a challenge to find out just what makes a frog an amphibian and us mammals. Between them, they have a set of cards with different animal features on. At the end of our challenge, we will know just what makes a mammal a mammal and a fish a fish. One of the head keepers at Marwell Zoo, Jeff Reed, is going to help them along the way. Oh, here you go, fish. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow, they're really big. They're one of the groups of vertebrae, aren't they? Yeah. 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 How are you getting on? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Yeah. We think we've got the key features of um, fish. Right. Yeah, because we've got half fins, half scales and half gills. Absolutely right. That's a pot belly pig. Yeah, a mammal. <laughs> so next, on to our feathered friends, birds. Oh, wow, look at that. It's got, like, a Mohican head. Isn't that cool? We've got red beaks. How are we doing? Um, look at their feathers. It's all, like, feathered, uh, ruffled out. And... 
These are Australian black swans. Right. The others are sort of pochards, yeah. various mixture of ducks. So obviously they're birds. Yep. So, so have you found any characteristics yet? Well, um, they have beaks. Yep. And um, they lay hard shelled eggs on land. Yes. And um, they have feathers. Yeah. And they also have wings as well. They do, yeah, that's good. The key characteristics are they have feathers with wings, they have beaks but no teeth, mm -hmm. and they lay hard shelled eggs on land. Feed young on mother's milk. That, that would be a mammal, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, as you can see, these are mammals. So what uh, characteristics have you found for mammals? Um, feed on mother's milk. Yes, yeah, which this one's doing because it's only eight months old, so he still has a drink. And um, they have hair or fur. They do, yes. As you can see, it's not obvious on these, but the actual horn is made of hair. You can see the tiny strands. Mm -hmm. You can feel the little hairs all over its body. Yes, you can, can't you? So on to a more typical mammal, this time a coatie. Well, as you can see, these are completely different types of mammal. Yeah. So what key characteristics have you found so far? The young feed on the mother's milk, and they have hair or fur. You can see that here, obviously. So to summarise, really, all mammals have fur or hair, and all mammals, their young feed on their mother's milk. Smooth, damp skin. Is that amphibians? Yeah. Yeah. These are tomato frogs, hence the colour, OK? And they come from the rainforest of Madagascar. So which vertebrate group do you think these belong to? Are they amphibians? They are, yes, yes. What do you think the key characteristics are? Um, do they have smooth, damp skin? Yes. Uh, lay soft eggs in water. Yes. And do they live on land and water? Yes. Okay. yes. That's a true amphibian. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they'll jump. Um, they lay soft shelled eggs on land. Well, that's Reptile. A yeah. yeah. Right, so finally, what are these? They're reptiles, reptiles, aren't they? Yep, quite right. So, what do you think is special about reptiles? Well, um, they lay soft shelled eggs on land. They do. And they have hard, dry scales. Yes. It's got really, really smooth, dry skin. Because you can feel it quite well, yeah. can't you? It's got a really nice colour. Yeah, these come in very many colours, these. So do you think you've, you've sorted out all your key characteristics for yeah. your five vertebrate groups? Yeah, definitely. definitely. You have? It's a lot clearer, yeah. Good, well done. Yeah. Well, I think you all deserve a good break now. <laughs> So, the key features of vertebrates you should know are fish have fins, scales and gills and live and breed in water. Mammals, which includes us, are covered with hair or fur and mothers suckle their young with their own milk. Amphibians are the only animals that can live on both land and in water and they have smooth, damp skin. Don't confuse them with reptiles that only breathe on land through lungs. They have dry, scaly skin and lay soft-shelled eggs on land. And finally, birds. They have feathers and wings, beaks but no teeth, and lay hard-shelled eggs on land. You should now know all five of our vertebrate groups and their distinguishable features. So, here's a question for you. What group does a crocodile belong to? And can you name two of its features? Well, we can rule out mammals, no fur, birds, no feathers, and fish doesn't spend its entire time in water. So that leaves reptiles and amphibians. Why not have a think? <laughs> Your answer should have come up with crocodiles are reptiles because although they spend much time in water, they can only breathe air using lungs. For your other characteristics, you could have chosen lay soft-shelled eggs on land or dry scaly skin. If you weren't sure of your answer, you could rewind and go over the main characteristics of vertebrates. So remember, classification is the sorting of living things with similar features into groups. And inheritance is the passing on of genetic information from parent to offspring.
This brings us to the end of variation classification and inheritance. If you're not sure what causes variation, then you could run through this unit again, checking out the key points. Remember, the website and the book have further information on the subject, or you could stop now and have a break. It's your choice.